How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? It is the month of June in this first season at the helm of the Seattle Mariners. We just got through the draft, and we're a couple of games back of 500, so we'll hope to do anything that we can. If you guys remember, our draft was very mediocre. All pitchers, we did find Johnny Park, who I didn't realize during the recording, but I did just notice, is from the Netherlands. I don't know what we call him, Dutch Dynamite or something like that, but I am so excited to bring a Dutch player into our team. Certainly seems like an untapped market, but uh, we are still undecided on signing uh, the rest of our rookies besides David Lang, who just has decent potential. Uh, Bobby Denton, there's no space for him. 69 is his highest potential, and he's currently 49 overall. But the other two low 60s overall with low 70s potential both starting pitchers i don't know i mean it couldn't hurt to sign both of them for as cheap as we could it just kind of depends on which one we really want to go with so who knows if we will uh assign either of them how about some all-star voting right off the bat doesn't look like we're leading in anything uh in the american league at this point but you never know we had guys in the right spots I think now that the season is a couple months in, it's looking a little bit rough relieving pitcher-wise. Uh, it's not looking too good. If we scroll down, I don't see any Mariners until we get to down to Drew Steckenrider. How about closing? Paul Seawald still second. He is quite a few votes behind Andrew Kittridge, who dominated us earlier. Paul with his 22 innings pitch, 24 strikeouts, and gosh, how many saves does he have? I, I know it's quite a few, 19 saves. Kitridge has 18 saves. That's a close vote, but uh, uh, the Rays are having a better season, so it's going in his favor at the moment. At left field, we still have Jared Kelnick sitting there, uh, 271,000 votes in fourth place. 12 home runs for our man, who doesn't have a lot of power, so that's pretty impressive, but behind some pretty big names who are on hot streaks on teams who are definitely doing better than us. And right field, yeah, I would expect to see Mitch Haniger as well. He's hit some big home runs recently, 206 at-bats, the most out of the top three. And that's a relatively close race, but Kyle Tucker is having a really good season so far. But that's all that we have at the moment for our All-Stars. So let's start to get towards that All-Star race and sim through. We're going to go back to playing more critical moments in this episode, but it's a quick win to put us one game behind 500 as we take out the Orioles 9-3. to And now it's a sub-500 Rangers team. This is uh, a big uh, series for us. The next couple of series are big. The Rangers are directly behind us in the division, and the Astros are directly in front of us. So if we could come out winning both of those series, it'd be pretty solid, and we're going to enter and see what we can do. Down one run in the top of the ninth with Mitch Haniger. John King, the man that we have to beat, and this is a great combo for us. No outs in the top of the ninth. I'm going to try to wait for our pitch. We all know that every once in a while I swing at one a little bit too early. And there's a seven mile an hour wind pushing to right field. Oh my gosh, that circle changed. I was a mile out in front of that. They do feel like if that was a fastball, maybe we would have had a good chance to get on it. But not the case. One and one and we foul off the sinker to make it one and two. Probably a bad pitch to swing at. Last thing we want is to strike out. And we got on that one. Circle change, driving out to the left field wall, and it's gone. Mitch Haniger is 11th home run of the season. The past couple of episodes, we have absolutely raked with Mitch Haniger, the right fielder, third in the voting, trying to push his way up there. That was a 408-foot home run, and that one ties this one up in the top of the ninth. That is absolutely fantastic. All our outs to work with here as well as Tom Murphy comes up to bat in this five spot. See what the catcher can do. He's 0 for 2 on the day. And I'd rather not have this go to extra innings. There's that circle change up. Um, we might be able to tee off on another one of those. Man, that sinker I thought was going to be outside the zone so quickly. Another 1-2 count. Everything low in the zone in this at bat so far. King deals that circle change outside. If we could draw a walk, that would be fantastic. Another runner on base would be great for us. Oh, the cutter pitch we haven't seen yet. Just came inside. We were a little bit early on it. Still 2-2. Two -two. And we lift that one to right field. If this one gets down, 
Could that be a base hit or could it be gone off the top of the wall? Tom Murphy, back-to-back -back home runs for the Seattle Mariners. And we're gonna take a lead, my oh my indeed. Man, after that, John King 10 pitches in has already given up two home runs and we got Jared Kelnick up to bat, who isn't incredible against uh, a lefty. Just gonna watch that second pitch sinker comes in for strike number one. Just the 56 power against lefties, so we would be hoping for a base hit here. Although I said that with Tom Murphy, and you know, it was that seven mile an hour tailwind that absolutely put it there. Kalnick just flies out to left center field, and they're going to see a, another pitching change here. Spencer Patton comes in as Kyle Lewis comes to the plate for strike A, or first pitch. A fastball outside for a ball, inside for a ball. I can't talk at the moment. <laughs> Second pitch coming. Oh, that one's high for a ball as well. Quickly, 2-0 and in the count. Waiting for a meatball. Oh, I thought that was it. Splitter got a little bit lower than I thought. The 2-1 pitch. Oh, driven. I don't know if it's too high, though. Kyle Lewis has him on the warning track. And it's out. Just back at the wall. Almost our third home run of the top of the inning. Just got under it a little bit too much. I think if it's the same hit, but to right field with the wind pushing it, it's gone. Abraham Toro comes to the plate. Watches ball number one. Man, a win in this game would be so big. Not only for the episode, but for the division record. Anything that we can do to try to fight for a playoff spot or a wild card spot is big. 2-0 count here. <laughs> that splitter has me swinging. Every single time I'm thinking a fastball coming right at me and it just drops out of the zone. 2-1. Splitter goes out outside that time. We're in a pretty good spot. Dylan Moore on deck. He's got six homers on the season. Toro fouls that one off. Again, filling in at third base for Eugenio Suarez, who I believe has a broken hand. We got a full count here. And we're going to be able to take the walk. Terrible control on that pitch. Almost hit us in the ankles. So Dylan Moore at the nine spot. Uh, don't expect a whole lot here. But if they can walk us and we can get back around to the top of the order, maybe what, Billy Hamilton on deck? That would be pretty nice. Second pitch coming. I'm just going to watch that one drop for a ball number two. Honestly, knowing how bad Dylan here is, I mean, righty against a righty, we are just going to, oh my gosh, he almost hit us. <laughs> we probably could have just stolen second. I was in shock there, 3-0. He missed that by a mile. This is Waldo Cabrera on deck. The uh, shortstop that we traded for as I'm not going to swing until he gets us in a two strike count because he's having a really hard time finding the strike zone. Has to deal a fastball. Even that one barely gets in. 3-1 now. And he misses. Ball number four. That's going to walk a runner back into scoring position. Cabrera. Uh, is this what? His first stat bat? He's batting. Well, he doesn't have a hit in the majors for us. And he might take a walk here. Spencer Patton misses outside. Every single ball dropping that confidence, dropping the energy for him. Ooh, thought about swinging there. Held up. We'll take the strike. Not too worried about that. Oswaldo just uh, kind of middle of the road. Power and contact against both lefties and righties. And we got a swing on that one, but it's lifted out to left field. It's not going to get down. Honestly, came closer to the wall than I expected, but two home runs, both solo shots, giving us a lead here and a chance maybe to go home with a win. We're going to leave Andres Munoz in for this bottom of the inning and see what he can do. He's going against the bottom of the lineup for the Rangers, so this is really, really good news. Misses the first fastball high, second fastball high as well. We're quickly behind in this count, 2-0. Just got to slow things down a little bit. Get it inside. That one's low. That one was fouled off by Garcia. And this is a mistake. Throwing him another fastball. Thankfully, he just watches it go past him. We've got him in the 2-2. And this is a beautiful spot for a little off-speed slider. See if we can catch him. We've thrown all fastballs, but that one's just too low. So full count for him. Going to go back to this slider. See if we can hit it. And he swings and misses. Got it low enough in the zone. Out number one. If we need to, Paul Seawald sitting in the bullpen, warming up. But hopefully we don't need it. Munoz strike on the first pitch of this at-bat. Looking for another one. Just 
I don't know what uh, Culberson's doing there. Very quickly. Oh, two. We can afford to pitch around him here now as it's an uh, outside slider for the second strikeout of the inning. It's three strikes left for the bottom of the order for these Rangers. And we get strike number one. Absolutely throwing gas. 100 miles an hour on those. That one's bad. <laughs> Terrible release. But we get strike number two. And Taveras. What can he do? We're throwing him that off-speed slider. Just caught the bottom corner of the zone. <laughs> it's another win for us. Oh, that was a beautiful hop-in of a game for us. Got it done. Munoz deserves the ball back in his glove. Beautiful pitching, even though I had nothing to do with it because <laughs> I was kind of a little bit off with the pinpoint. But it works to get the win. I think that might be enough to win the series. Man, Mitch Haniger in the past month has been something else. And I said we won the series, but that was just the first game of the series. So let's move on and see what we can do. Game two is a 2-6 loss. Game three, we're going to hop in. Paul Seawald, we have the lead. Two outs. This is his spot. All we have to do is survive, but it's Corey Seager up to bat, and he's done me dirty in the past. First pitch, a fastball inside for ball number one. Runners on first and second, so a base hit probably is enough to score. A double is enough for them to win. Seager swings on a high fastball and misses, and they want me to throw four-seamer high. We're going to go two-seamer low and away. Miss the zone, 2-1. Try another one of these two-seamers. Ooh, just dropped it down in there. Two strikes. One strike remaining. We're going to go low fastball, see what we can get out of him. Seems a little bit weird. Doesn't catch the zone, and it loads the count. 3-2. Runners will be moving, and he swings and fouls it off. I threw him a, a walk pitch, but he keeps us alive. And he keeps us alive with that two-seamer as well. Man, I, I'm kind of scared to keep throwing these uh, fastballs, but I don't feel confident throwing a slider in this spot. And that one is going to be an RBI. Almost no chance Hanniger gets this one to home plate in time. We're going to extra innings if we can stay alive. We hung that one over the middle of the plate. Not at all what we wanted to see. And oh, we did it again, but Ibanez can't hit it. That is uh, very scary. Seawald in a tough spot here for sure. Got Jose De Jesus warming up just in case. But we get the strike out there. That was a quick three pitch at bat. Real shame we couldn't do that against Seager. Probably should have thrown something off speed, but... This doesn't quite work out, Sands. Well, we're into extra innings. Tied up. Just need to get a base knock. Get a run batted in. <laughs> well, as fate would have it, it's Mitch Hanniger up to bat. One for four on the day. That was really... I like that pitch. They called it a ball. <laughs> That's a horrible call from the umps. Sinker definitely hit, but it's 1-0 in our favor now. Second pitch on the way. Oh, no, this circle changed up the same pitch that we launched last time. We're out in front of. Got a lot of stuff breaking low. 1-1 one, one is the count. Oh, we got on it enough to at least move the runner. I Oh, no. I didn't tag up. I thought that he wasn't going to get there, so I sent him early. He was trying to get that RBI early. Maybe paid the price. I don't know. He made a good throw there, though. Just uh, on the wrong side of good on that one. Sent it the wrong direction. Kyle Lewis doing the same thing. Pushing it oppo. And that's going to be out number two. No chance to tag up. We're going to be in danger here. Last time we had that seven mile an hour wind to help us out. This time it's a calm day in Texas. So not sure what to see. Ty France looks at the circle change up for ball number one. Just begging for a base hit. It's got to be a good base hit though. And that's not it. It's a sinker into the dirt. Last thing I want to have to do is try and fight a off against uh, a Rangers team with a runner on second that could walk me off with three outs. Got this guy in a 2-1. 21 pitches for King. And that's not going to do it. Not able to get through. Ty France way too slow to get there. So three up, three down. The Rangers just have a chance now to walk us off. Ibanez now on second. 66 speed for him. Got to be worried. Anything into the outfield is going to advance him. And oh, 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 oh the foul ball pretty deep there. Anything, uh, any base hit 
probably, uh, I don't know, gets him home, I would imagine. Quickly 0-2. Would love a strikeout. We get a strikeout. We might think about walking somebody, but we got to get that first out here. Oh, my gosh. We just can't get the foul. Need him just to pop something up. Let's go with a two-seamer inside. Try to drop it in that corner. Ref doesn't see it. 2-2. Two -two. Looking for anything in the corners. That one kind of hung over the middle. Again, fouled off. Stays 2-2. Two -two. We got to go with this kind of low inside slider. And we missed Marcus Semyon on deck. And we walked him. So runners at first and second with no outs. We could be looking for a double player throwing to first and third. I guess that would be third and first. But Semyon's pretty quick. So that's not promising as he watches the fastball down the middle. Gives us an 0-2 to work with. This, maybe we can try to find a strikeout pitch, and there it is. Maybe would have had the corner, but he swings and misses. Out number one. We just need to get him into a grounder here. Duran on first does have that 72 speed to work with, so that's worrisome. And that one is lifted down the right field line, but it curves foul. 0-1 the count to Mitch Garver. Always a threat to absolutely send one deep on us. Not the case there. 1-1, we miss. And Ump doesn't give us the call. That one hurts quite a bit. 2-1 count. Last thing we need to do is walk the bases loaded. We get him 2-2. Need the strikeout here. We're going to go slider outside. Just try to tempt him with this pitch. It's perfect. He doesn't swing. <laughs> Full count. What can we do here? It's lifted up. Kyle Lewis, can he get there in time? He does, and he's going to be close enough, so they won't be able to tag up. That is so, so big. Two outs, and it feels like maybe we could be able to survive this inning. Although that's going to get through. Mitch Hanniger, the throw to the plate. Will it be in time? They waved him home. Murphy didn't get him, and they'll walk us off. A perfect throw to the plate, and we get him, but we threw it a little bit too far inside. And he's just going to miss the tag. Oh, man. You know, I think that animation's stupid. I think if they catch that, they just got to roll with the momentum and spin the other direction. But uh, that's an unfortunate reality of the, uh, the game. As Paul Sewell takes his third loss, we lose it in extra innings. Unable to win the series, which is a shame because that would have put us 500. And now we go up against the Astros who are in front of us, losing the first game, losing the second game. And we'll have to jump in and try to survive uh, in the third. We come in here fourth in the league and runs allowed. The Astros are third, but it's Jared Kelnick. You never know. Against a righty, this is the kind of guy that we could hit a homer off of if we tee one up. Runners on first and seconds, no outs. I said first and seconds. First and second. <laughs> Anyways, it's a uh, fastball high for ball number one. I'm just looking for my pitch down the middle, really, at this point. Or we can just ground it into a double play. It will move the uh, runner to third. It's not what we wanted to see, though. Abraham Toro, backup third baseman in. He's one for three on the day. Lefty against righty is nice. Got to swing at that fastball. I like a low fastball, but we can't get on it. Any sort of base hit ties this one up. And we take the ball there, one and one. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. He's going to miss just low with the slurve. Gets us ahead in the count 2-1. Still just kind of waiting for our pitch. That was not it. Chopped it to the shortstop. Toro's not quite quick enough, so we get swept on the series. Man, we came into this episode so close to 500, but it has not been a positive start. Well, uh, down to 29 and 34. Where does that put us? Fourth in the division behind the Rangers as they have broken the 500 mark. We need to go on a run. Boston, the team also down on their luck, hoping for some wins here. We'll go in with Marco Gonzalez trying to seal the win. And Marco has 97 pitches. I assume he must have started this game. Xander Bogarts in here. Three outs to try and get. A little circle change. We get him swinging at that one low out of the zone for one and one. 
I'm just gonna keep going slower and slower. 12, six curve. Good job from Tom Murphy, throws him out. That was closer than it should have been. He did the catcher to do his job and he did it perfectly. Devers coming to the plate as we are at pitch number 100. We're gonna go for this complete game. 12-6 curve, just batted down the line to tie France. Devers not a threat now, two outs. So just three strikes remaining in this game. What can we do? Gonzalez first pitch, a circle change right down the middle. Thankfully he doesn't swing on it. Let's try the cutter. This is low. We're kind of low on a lot of these pitches. 1-1 one, one count. Again, looking at the circle change. That one missed by a mile. Is not a very good pitch. And we just... I, I just can't find the zone. 3-1 count. Catcher wanted a uh, curveball. We give him that. Toro fields it. Somehow got there. Oh, man. Good, good defense from the infield. Allows us to get the 1-0 win. Big, big win for Marco Gonzalez there. Gets him to three and three on the season, and it's a complete game shutout. So great way to start the homestand here. We've got, oh man, we're at home for a while. Uh, Red Sox, Twins, and the Angels all coming here. We are going to lose their second game and a chance maybe to win the series. It's Ty France up, we're down a run. So France 0 for three in this game, one for nine in the series thus far. And that's going to get him a base knock. That's a double. Out into left center field. The 19-speed man chugging his way around the bases. Man, what a first pitch swing right there on Garrett Whitlock. That's going to allow us to... That's the man, Mitch Hanniger. Get him up to bat. Could he walk it off? I don't feel all that confident right now, to be honest. But no outs. Runner on second. Just got to wait for a decent pitch, you know. It's got to have to be an incredibly terrible uh, pass pitch for us to try to move tight a third. Does get us into a 1-0 count. Again, still just looking for our pitch. And oh no, I didn't mean to swing on that one. Catcher gets under it. Out number one. That is going to bring it. Tom Murphy to the plate. He's one for three on the day. And against the righty, man, I don't know if I'm confident. So painful to swing on that last pitch. That was a good pitch to swing on. That sinker, you hit that right, gets through the gap. Anything is possible. But, you know, we just got to look for something nice in the slider. I thought that was coming down a little bit more. Swung on and missed. Just like that. 0-2. And he's going to have me battling. Very likely I strike out here, especially if he's throwing pitches low. going to be hard to fight back down 0-2. And he got me. I was late swinging. I think it was a strike anyways. So the first pitch was beautiful, gets us a double. Kelnick has to save it now as we're two outs, bottom of the ninth. It's the guy to do it. Ooh, sinker just low. Thought about swinging, glad we didn't. We're ahead in the count. Pitch number nine for Whitlock. It's that sinker right down the middle again. I gotta stop talking while he's in the windup because that's what's hurting us. But he's gonna miss that time, 2-1. I got to say, I don't think I want to walk here. I think I'm swinging for a hit no matter what. Oh, we just fell off the circle change. That off-speed 83 mile an hour is hard to hit. 2-2 two -two now. And he's going to load the count. So full count. Well, we'll have the runner moving here. And we're just going to foul it off. I guess we're not going to have the runner moving. I don't know what I'm saying. Nobody on first base. And he's just going to miss. Oh, I thought about swinging. We took the walk. Not feel, not sure how I feel about it. Two more walks allows us to tie it up, though. And uh, that's going to bring Kyle Lewis up to bat, who is 0 for 3 on the day. Not a whole lot of good battings going on so far today. It's also the reason why we've only scored one run. So we watch strike one go by us on the first pitch of the at-bat. Pitch two's low and away. Or gosh, I keep saying away. Low and inside for ball number one. Again, I don't mind just playing for a walk here. Looking for maybe a lefty. And if he's going to be throwing pitches that are that easy not to swing at, uh, it might happen, obviously. Just the one sinker kind of middle of the zone. We'll look for that again. Oh, had to sing it, swing at that one. Puts us 2-2. Two -two. 
Dropped the PCI by about a mile on it. Kyle gets on it. He's got good power. And he drives it into the gap. I'm going to round him home. It's so risky. Nope. Can't do it. Can't do it. Oh. It was a bad throw to the plate. I think that that's it. Instead, the bases are loaded with the single. If Ty France was any quicker, I send that for sure. But 19 speed is just too slow. Well, it was Abraham Toro up to bat, but we're bringing in Jesse Winker. Ninth in the uh, left field all-star vote. And uh, just take a look at this real quick. 99 contact against righties, 84 power. If anybody's going to launch a Grand Slam game winner here, it should be Jesse Winker. See what he can do. Just got to wait for the pitch. Try to be patient because, again, a walk ties this game up and guarantees us an extra inning. He's batting 306 so far this season. And Garrett's starting to get a little bit tired. Oh, that was the pitch. The circle changed, but we got in front of it. If that's the four-seamer, it's gone. One, one count. And we hit it. It's a decent drive out to left field, but it, it actually wasn't good timing, but we didn't barrel it. So we're going to lose. Oh my gosh. Should have sent Ty France. Should have just rounded the bases. Should have put in a pinch runner. That hurts quite a bit. We have now lost three series in a row, and we're going up against an okay Minnesota. But, I mean, Boston also has a pretty bad record, so you would have thought we could have stolen another win there. Twins win the first game. They lose the second game. We get that 8-4 and a chance to win the series. We get it done. Thankfully, final series of the day to end the homestand. Four games against the Angels. Win the first one, 6-3. Lose the second one, 0-4. And we can come in here and try to get the save with Paul Seawald. Oh, this is not going to be easy. Thankfully, we are just at Otani. Don't have to face Otani and Trout. But Shohei, two for four on the day. No outs. Uh, good news is we're at home, so we don't have to worry about batting. If we can just not give up any runs here, Paul. Good couple of strikes. Crawford fields it cleanly, throws. Got him out. Man, Otani's quick, but we just get it there for out number one. Brings Jared Walsh up to bat. He also has a hit so far today. Paul's throwing decent pitches, but just missed the zone there. Catcher wants us to go right back to it. And that one's going to bounce off the bag. They're going to say that that is in play, and it's going to bounce into the stands. That is a really weird ground rule double. Um, you don't see that often. Just absolutely tanked off of third base and bounced its way down the line. I think he probably would have only gotten two, but I'm glad it's a guaranteed two and no more. Unfortunately, it does put him into scoring position, letting Rendon come to the plate. Can't afford to walk anybody, and that's going to get through. Going to try to prevent them from doing anything more. Man, runners in the corners with one out now. So Justin Upton, we're going to be pitching him low. I got to try to pitch this into a double play. If we get a strikeout, we can go away from it. But the last thing I want to do is have them get a sack fly and run uh, somebody home. Not the quickest on third, but quicker than you would want. Upped in the slider away. Doesn't swing at it. One and two. Maybe we can get him on the second offering. Oh, just missed the zone on that one. Two, two. He doesn't want to give me anything. I refuse to pitch up high, so we'll go two-seamer. We... Left it middle of the zone, but he fouls it off. And we're going to go right back to that pitch, try and get it a little bit more successful. And we got him swinging for out number two. That successfully eliminates the threat of a sack fly tie in the game. So with Max Stassi up to bat, we can pitch right back up to the top of the ump. What do we got? Angel Hernandez back there. No love for the fastball at the top of the zone. This one, Mitch Hanniger going to have to chase it down. And he gets it on the run to end the game. Oh, that was awfully close to being a two-run double. But we survive at home. We need those wins, especially because the Angels are leading the division. Every single loss we can pin on them is going to be big. That one is save number 22 for Paul Seawald, as we have at the very least tied the series will see the final game of this episode we're gonna get a chance to go in there and maybe walk him off we got tom murphy at the plate he's got a double on the day no outs runners at first and second and cabrera at second with that 77 speed rizel iglesias a very good pitcher though 
And I might be trying to work a walk here. Uh, we got plenty outs to work with. I don't want to bat into a double play necessarily. Maybe we can get him to mess up. But if we get a pitch, we'll swing. <laughs> Probably not the best pitch to swing at. Lacey is throwing upper 90s on those fastballs. This is something to worry about. And, oh, he just hits the corner with the circle change to make it a 1-2 count. Pitch number four. I'm going to foul it off. That's, uh, that's a tough one to not let go past. Still 1-2 here, pitch five. And oh, we caught on it almost well enough to sneak it past Rendon. Fouled away. Every single one of these pitches, lowering his stamina. He gets us with the strikeout. Big slider. Hit the corner of the zone, but man, sucks just not to get a bat on it. We've turned around to the top of the order now. Still bottom of the ninth, one out. And we take a first pitch strike. Might have to pinch hit for the third uh, at bat. And that's going to be game over. Double play. Unless there's an error. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Oh, <laughs> I was just... I didn't realize how quick he was. Runners in the corners, two outs. This is going to be interesting. Adam Frazier comes up to bat. One of four on the day. He's got decent contact against righties, but not the best power. All we need, though, is a base hit to stay alive. We have been struggling to get those. And that's going to be game. Got under the fastball. Pop it up behind the catcher. Well, he, Okay, I guess uh, Max Stassi just lost it. We're still alive. Seemed incredibly catchable to me. I'm going to take the fastball for ball one. What can we do in this situation? Ooh, he almost hit us with that one. Ball two. I think I'm definitely at risk of the slider here. 2-2 two, two count. See what he's got. Oh, he hit the slider. It's not going to be enough. Fly out to left field. And uh, we, we split the series 2-2. Two, two. Well, this has been an interesting uh, episode. Decent amount of wins, too many losses, and we are eight and a half games back. I think we came into this one eight games back, so sliding backwards, five games back of 500, and it's actually the Astros now in the lead for the division. We're just kind of squandering away back here, struggling five and five in our last 10. It's been interesting, but we just can't quite put together a big enough run to get ourselves into a good spot. Plenty of baseball left to play this season. But every game that goes past that we take a loss kind of hurts a little bit more. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed this one, please let me know down in the comments and maybe with a quick hit of the like button. Subscribe if you're interested in getting notified when new content gets put out. And then you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goodmaster. You guys are the Northwest Green Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.